Um, all of these. This is for you. But can you open up and it's private? Oh, Good evening, everyone. If you could please take your seats. Welcome to Standing Committee for Monday, April 14th. I'd like to welcome trustees, uh, members of the public, and of course, staff. We do have uh, a updated agenda on yellow in front of you this evening. We're looking at this point for uh, approval of the agenda. So are there any comments or questions on the agenda? Would someone like to move the agenda? Moved by Trustee Brennan, seconded by Trustee Glauser. All in favor? That is unanimous. At this point, I ask if there's any declarations of conflict of interest from trustees. Trustee Mulholland. To the chair, probably to the recording. I'm looking at the new agenda. 
I think it's 5B school. I think it's 5B. Yep, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Mahollan. That's noted. Uh, Trustee Turkstra. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Conflict of interest for 4A. I won't be participating. 4A, 5A? Five A. Five A. Okay, and are there any other declarations? Seeing none, we move to the updated item on our agenda, which is the delegation from Jed Gardner. Do we have Jed in the room? Mr. Gardner is Mr. Gardner in the room? Okay, so it appears we do not have a delegation. If perhaps there is miscommunication or whatnot, we'll keep an eye out if he walks in the room. But otherwise. We will move on. Item number five, which is our finance committee report from April 2nd. It's in our package uh, updated under number five. Your pages may be numbered otherwise. We'll look to the chair of the committee, Trustee Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. I'd like to um, present the committee report, which deals with four recommendations, one dealing with education development charges, the second one, the school-based staffing, the third one with secondary school revitalization strategy guiding principles, and the fourth one um, is, is a, a motion from um, the committee regarding a letter to be written to the Ministry of Education. In addition, <clears throat> there are... Um, uh, 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 updates on um, capital renewal projects, on capital projects that have been associated with ARC recommendations, that's item number six, and item number seven is the interim financial report. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to move the report. Thank you. Moved by Trustee Bishop. Do we have a seconder on the finance report? Seconded by Trustee Turkstra. Look to you, Trustee Bishop. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to... Um, I'd like to um, uh, deal with each of the recommendations separately, but perhaps, um, depending on which way you'd like this to do, we, we either do the monitoring items first, or we do the four recommendations. Thank you, Trustee Bishop. So there are four items, one through four, that do have action items. Uh, the report in its entirety has been moved. So perhaps what we'll do is deal with one through four separately. Um, but before we do so, let's look to the monitoring items. So the remainder of the report, which we would find as five through seven. Are there, so I'll ask trustees, are there any questions on the finance report pertaining to monitoring items five through seven? Uh, Trustee Turkstra. Oh, sorry, just on clarification, sorry. Trustee Glauser. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, th yeah, no that, that would be correct, yes. I'll try to keep to the old numbering because that's the package we have in front of us. Sorry about that. Okay, so Trustee Turkstra on monitoring items number five, six, or seven. Well, it's just that um, it needs to be uh, noted that I actually arrived at this meeting after action item number one because it says that it was carried unanimously, but I actually wasn't present at the time to declare the conflict. Okay, we will note that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Trustee Turkstra. Okay, comments on the monitoring items. Okay, the report has been moved, moved, so just a motion. The motion is already on the floor, and that will accept the monitoring items. All in favor? No, that doesn't pertain to your conflict. That's only B. So, all in favor? That appears to be unanimous. Thank you. Uh, so now we are going to do items one through four, one at a time. So I will we'll look to the chair of the committee, uh, Trustee Bishop, uh, to start off each item. Trustee Bishop. Mr. Chairman, if people think that this, and this looks immensely familiar, it is in fact very familiar. It's because it's a requirement to do this on an annual basis. There's nothing really changed since the last time we did this. We're just required to do this, that, the, the, um, that we uh, approve the um, 
the, 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 the um, policies and directives are reviewed and that we, we have to indicate that there is no operating surface, surplus available in the non-classroom portion of the budget that can be applied to reduce growth-related net education land costs and that there have been no opportunities to implement alternative accommodation arrangements. So those are the two items, but they, they, we've done this before. This, this, this is, is, is something we do on an annual basis. Thank you, Trustee Bishop. Just a reminder that Trustee Turkstra has declared a conflict on this item. She'll not be voting. Are there any other, or are there any comments or questions on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor? That is unanimous with Trustee Turkstra having declared a conflict. Moving to item two, 2014-15 school-based staffing. Trustee Bishop. Mr. Chairman, this, I believe Ms. Mr. Hicks, Trustee Hicks, wished to, to say something? Well, oh, okay, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely, but right. we're looking to Trustee Bishop right. as chair of the committee to further introduce the item. Yes, Mr. Chairman, every April we bring the, the school board approves the school bed staffing so that um, we can go ahead with preliminary staffing of our schools for the coming September so that we meet collective bargaining uh, and collective agreement requirements. And uh, as you will see, um, this depends on, on of course, um, uh, uh, the enrollment, the, pre the, the um, predicted enrollment for our schools and the, um, uh, the, the requirements of the school board to meet legislative requirements for school class sizes and uh, as well as um, the collective agreement. So, Mr. Chairman, this is our usual practice of bringing this um, to the board at this time. And for details, I'm, I believe that the superintendent would be pleased to provide more, full, a fuller in, in English. Thank you, Trustee Bishop. Trustee Hicks. Oh, and just a reminder, Trustee Maholland has declared a conflict on this item and will not be participating. The, uh, this item, which is under 4.1, We'll be dealing with the same item, by the way, on 4, um, 4B1. You understand that uh, it's, it's exactly the same, except on 4B3, it gives you more detail. So, I've heard. I guess the chair doesn't. The finance doesn't agree. No, Mr. Chairman, if you're looking so, at. Sorry, sorry, just clarification to Trustee Bishop. Um, you're looking at, um, just, just to clarify this, Mr. Chairman, it's on 4-2, four, um, four uh, item number 4 you're discussing, you're, you're looking at? Sorry, uh, perhaps I'll clarify. Oh, so we're looking at, oh, I'm no, so no, sorry. Yes, no, you're I'm right. sorry. We're looking at, yes. on, on our new agenda, it's 5B. In our package, you will see it as 4B. 4B in our package. Yes. So that's 4B-1 where the report starts. Is that's everyone right. clear? So they're exactly the same except 4B-1 gives you more information. That's right. 4B-1 so, is the report, so that's background information from the committee. So that's what the committee would have received. The committee has flagged that and it was requested that that be part of our package. So that's the information that corresponds to the item. So that's background information that, that justifies or provides information on the motion. But there's both listed under action items. So if we pass 4-1, which is the Finance Committee report, does that mean that the recommended action on 4B1, we've already passed it? No, so what we did is we split the items and we're voting on them separately. So the monitoring items have been accepted. Those are numbers five through <laughs> seven. Um, and items one through four have not been passed. So while the report for finance has been moved, each item within is, is going to be debated, discussed, and passed or voted on separately. So number one has been passed. So in the report, looking at 4-1, item number one has been passed, and that's referring to the EDCs. Right. That has been passed. Right. No other action item in the report has been passed yet. Right. So now we're discussing Number two, school-based staffing. Yes, which pertains to 4B in the package. Okay, not, not to confuse everybody, but when we get to 4B1, we've been discussing the staffing numbers 
that are the same staffing numbers that are on 4 1. Yeah, so, so, so that's correct. So I understand, Trustee Hicks. So when you look at 4 1, that is the committee report. And item number two on that report highlights the action item that you find on 4B 1. So you are correct that they are in the same place. And in fact, that 4B is there as background information. So we're not going through A through F separately. They're listed on the agenda just to highlight the items. But we've done the report in its entirety and separated items one through four. We passed, just for clarification, we've, so just to let trustees know, so just to make sure this is clear, we have item number four dash one in our package. There are seven numbers or seven items on that front and back sheet. We have so far completed items five, six, seven, and one. At the moment, we are simply discussing item two, which is school-based staffing for 2014-15. So any questions or comments on that item, now is the time to make those comments or arguments. Okay. And there is a recommended motion that goes along with that item for school-based staffing. Okay. Trustee Hicks. All right, the on 4-1, uh, item 2A, the numbers with elementary, ele uh, secondary, uh, school, they give us the numbers there. Can I have the numbers that each area is an increase or an decrease? Thank you, Trustee Hicks. I'll look to the Superintendent of Business, Superintendent Zucker. If I could help, all you have to do is go to uh, sheet 4B3. That's right. Okay, so you answered your own question. So 4B3, you'll see the difference okay. of the two items. Thank All you right. for highlighting. Can, can then, through the chair, uh, tell me those figures, what figures are related to the declining enrollment and what figures are to school closures? Thank you. We'll look to the superintendent, to the, to the superintendent of business, Superintendent Zucker. Uh, thank you. And through the chair, if you do look at Appendix A, which is 4B-3, um, what you'll see are our teachers, our ECEs, principals, vice principals, and then the school office administration, school custodian, and EAs. So when we look at um, staff in a classroom, it is based on enrollment. So for elementary teachers and secondary teachers and ECEs, which are um, our uh, the ECEs are in the full-day kindergarten classes. Those are based on enrollment. Um, for the principal, vice principal, school office administration, and school custodian, those for this year are based on school closures. Thank you, Trustee Hicks. My comment would be uh, past practice. It doesn't mean that we have to follow that past practice, but normally at this time, only elementary teachers, secondary teachers, ECE, principals, and office admin will come to us uh, because they have to be informed because of the collective agreement and the guidance. So now we've added two categories at this time. We'd normally wait to do that once we are involved in the budget process, totally within the budget process. So it has been a change in direction. Director want, would might want to make a comment on that, or the superintendent of finance, Mr. Director. Through you, Mr. Chair. Just at this time, the uh, reason it's brought before you is because uh, the trustee decisions that have been made in the last number of years have brought about um, the need to be sure that we are bringing before you effective planning that realized, that comes from the realization of those school closures. And so because this is the first year, at least in the last five that I've been with you, that we've had so many school closures happening at the same time, that's why it's here. Thank you, Mr. Director. Trustee Hicks. Last comment. Uh, normally they would be uh, put before other areas that we'd be looking at too so that we're fair to this this group of uh, people and other areas where trustees would look at cuts to uh, to make normally that's what we do but now what we're doing is we're isolating 
steps and we're zeroing in and we're making that decision. Thank you, Trustee Hicks. Trustee Simmons. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just, <clears throat> just to get on on this, uh, I think, in the direction that uh, Trustee Hicks is going in. The, re the recommended action states this is a preliminary allocation. Yeah. So uh, maybe staff could comment on what it means to be a preliminary a allocation. Thank you, Mr. Director. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I think the Superintendent of Human Resources should probably make his way to a microphone to um, explain what this actually means. Thank you. Superintendent Rocco. <clears throat> yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. In terms of the, the preliminary allocations, uh, as uh, both uh, Superintendent Zucker had indicated, when you're looking at the school closure data in terms of uh, what individual sites we have, we base the staffing on the required uh, models that we are using within our existing schools. Therefore, X amount of staff are required. The reductions, <clears throat> therefore, a number is created, and then hopefully through a guiding principles that we're using, such as attrition, it'll minimize any impact on staff. Thank you, Superintendent. Trustee Simmons? Any further comments or questions on item two, school-based staffing? Trustee Hicks, you've already spoken once, unfortunately. Can we split this? It is split, so we're only voting on item number two. There are no other items that will be voted on when I ask no, for this vote. <laughs> so when you say that, which items within that list are you proposing? So you'd like to remove or vote on separately school office administrators, sorry, principals, vice principals? No, everything but school custodians and education. Okay. That's what I was presenting. I believe that that's tied directly to uh, school closures. Well, let me clarify that. Educational assistance does not see a difference. So is there any change in educational assistance due to school closures? Superintendent Rocco? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, educational systems are totally driven based on student need and enrollment. So you're, you're, <clears throat> they're totally tied to student need. So in fact, your enrollment could decrease, but if we have students that are uh, in severe need of educational assistance, uh, they could increase. But at this point, based on the model, it is enrollment driven. So the only items, if, this, if Trustee Hicks would like them uh, divided, as I recall, if I'm looking at uh, the director's sheet there, the items that would be due to enrollment are the elementary and secondary teachers, early childhood educators, so the first three would be enrollment, principal, vice principal, school office administrators, and school custodial are all due to closures, so they would have a C beside them, and educational assistance would be enrollment based. So one, two, three, four enrollment, three closures. Okay, I'm not entirely sure how we would split that. Um, Okay, thank you. So we do see a full list at this point, which has seven items. Um, right now we're voting on A and B. Trustee Simmons, for clarification only, please. Yeah, just clarify. These numbers we're getting are, are, are fixed in time for now. They're preliminary numbers. Am I, is that correct? Lieutenant Rocco? Uh, three, I'm sure they are, but they are based on the they are based on the, the current enrollment that we have. So the four items are based on current enrollment, which could change correct. Uh, the other three areas, the schools are closing, so we don't see those items changing. Thank you. Okay, uh, first time speaker, Trustee Orban. I don't think we've done this before, so my questions, so my questions could be a little bit uh, awry. Well, what I'm trying to say here, the preliminary allocation, so this is like a guarantee if we have recommended and passed that. So what I'm concerned about, and this could partially in camera, well, this is guarantee those kind of jobs for teachers. What if suddenly uh, the... Um, <coughs> the um, uh, the answers come in how many kids or how many kids we actually <coughs> receive because when you read the papers, I, I, I get a little confused uh, 
uh, Mr. Chair, when I hear about kids sure. not being there and we're not sure, looks like they're going across the road or to the left of the road. So my question is then with respect, <coughs> how could we then negotiate <coughs> guaranteed jobs? Or do we say, yes, we said that, and we passed it as a recommendation, and therefore, you, all those teachers who have been given these jobs, they are going to have them. That's all there is to it. You can't. So, what do you send this? What are you going to do? Okay, so if we could look to the director just on clarification yes. on what it means to pass preliminary allocation and what happens if enrollment changes, yes. and this has to change, Mr. Director. Through you, Mr. Chair. The report that includes teachers. <coughs> and educational assistants and the like that are directly connected to enrollment, this board has seen in the exact form every year. And that what happens is these are preliminary numbers based upon a snapshot in time. Usually, and we are finding that our enrollment can grow, and as it does, we have a process we follow each and every year and more staff is provided in order to meet that need. That's the one piece of this report that is exactly the same. The other piece of this report, which is a bit different, is that specifically connected to certain schools closing and some of our staff grants are directly connected to the existence of a school. We're not talking about all of our OP2 or QP staff here. We're simply talking about those directly connected to the schools that are closing, which no longer then have a grant attached to it. That's the additional piece for why this is a school-based staffing report, and that is the uh, departure from what's happened historically. Thank you, Mr. Director. Trustee Orban? All I'm going to say it is, um, through the chair, it is confusing when you see preliminary. Mm. And if I was a member of a specific group, I'd question that. And where's our guarantee? So um, I'll let it at that because I should believe you know what you're doing. But it's, it's still a little confusing to me. Uh, through the chair, thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Orban. I'm not sure if, if we require a response, but the concern is definitely noted. Uh, so I see a number of hands. I have Trustee Johnstone followed by Mr. Maholland and Trustee Brennan. Trustee Johnstone. Thank you, through the chair. I know that in previous years, uh, we have been able to deal with um, these numbers through attrition. And I just want to clarify, will, we, will trustees uh, be continue to receive updated reports throughout the budget process as staff retires and as we realize attrition? Superintendent. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Trustee Johnstone is uh, is correct. As uh, as we look at uh, uh, our staffing levels, and uh, you know, through retirements and attrition, these numbers, and I think that's the key word that Trustee Simmons used, preliminary, because as we receive retirements, the whole impact on the system, we will be more than willing to bring that uh, forth to the trustees. Thank you. I have Trustee Mulholland next, but I do have you down, Mr. Mulholland, as a conflict of interest on this item, so which requires you or does not allow you to participate. Uh, through you, the chair, to the director's comment. His comment was, I have a conflict because school custodial 370. But the comment was just made that that number is only based on the schools that are closing. If, if my son works at a school that is not closing, does that mean I have a con do not have a conflict? Just, just clarification on conflict. It's up to the individual trustee to determine if they have a conflict. It would be unfair to put the director in that position. Okay, no, I, I just asked the director to, to explain his comment. What he said, that number is based on the school closures only. With you. So clarification from you, Mr. Director, on the custodial staff being based on closures. Through you, Mr. Chair, just so that it is absolutely accurate, would you allow, please, the Superintendent of Business to speak specifically to the QP piece? Yes, uh, Superintendent. So, can I just make one clarification before I start? This report is the exact same as it has been in previous years, including 
custodial administrators and um, school operations. We always at this time came up with, an, with a preliminary number for those positions in the school. So this year it's a little bit, the numbers are a little bit higher and that may be what the difference is because we do have school closures. So there are more QP and sort of school custodial and clerical. Um, than we are used to seeing, but that this is, we did provide preliminary numbers at this time in the past. So, so just to clarify to the trustee's question, the question, as I understood it, is school custodial staff, is that tied directly to school closures? Are only to school closures? That was the trustee question. Yes, so if we look at the schools that are closing next year, there are 12.5 custodians in those schools at this time. So preliminarily, if we close those schools tomorrow and there was nowhere else to go, and we made, we made a lot of assumptions here, but again, it's a preliminary number which can go up or down, then yes, there are 12.5 custodians in the school at this time. Thank you. Trustee Brennan. I, I, I'm not sure I misheard something, so I really wanted to be absolutely clear. The numbers that have been generated here, they are based in, on um, estimates of student numbers for 2014 to 15. That's my question first. Superintendent of Business? Yes, that's correct. Okay, Thank so you. it is not in fact our current student population. Is that correct? Correct, that is not. So if the numbers here reflect what we are guesstimating will in fact happen based on what we understand to be our enrollment for September. Appears to be a yes. Okay, I'm, I, I apologize for the redundancy, but I really want to be clear. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments from trustees? So the motion is on item number two, and on your report 4-1, you'll see A and B. That is the motion on the floor and what we are voting on. Trustee Mulholland has uh, mentioned a conflict of interest, will not be participating in the vote. All those in favor? That is unanimous of the trustees voting with Trustee Mahalan de declaring a conflict. We are now moving to item number three on the committee report, which is strictly secondary school revitalization strategy guiding principles. I'll look to the chair of finance, um, Trustee Bishop, and also note that it is in our package under 4C-1. That is the background information to supplement this item. Trustee Bishop. Mr. Chairman, this is, this is the, these are the guiding principles for secondary school revitalization strategy. And trustees will note that um, in May there will be a proposed plan which will be presented to trustees based on the April funding announcement, which will include the scope and schedule of work proposed at each of the schools. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I, at this point, I would like the superintendent to provide more information. Thank you so for, to the superintendent of business to provide further information yes. on this item. No, and I believe it's the senior facilities officer. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. So we're looking to the senior facilities officer through the director. Uh, come on down, Dan. Officer. Through you, Mr. Chair, this is a, a very exciting report in that it addresses the one um, outstanding recommendation that was as part of all of the secondary arcs, and that was to look at the remaining facilities and reinvest in those facilities. So to date, we've received funding and approval for a new secondary school in the north. We have received funding and approval for a new secondary school in the south. We have uh, self funded the addition at Dundas Valley um, and what this report is looking to do is set the stage for next month. We're asking that the funds that were otherwise allocated for the construction of the South School, which we were intending on self-funding ourselves, um, take those funds, approximately $30 million, and reinvest those funds strategically in the remaining facilities. Um, there are four guiding principles identified here by which we would adhere to when allocating those funds. First and foremost is identifying those schools that the long-term facilities master plan has identified as being in poor condition. 
uh, at the top of that list would be Ancaster and Sherwood. Um, the second one is to ensure that the revitalization will focus on the learning environments. You'll notice in the table included in the chart, um, we identify science labs and tech shops um, because anybody that's walked through our schools uh, understands that both require updating. Um, the third guiding principle is that we uh, ensure that we adhere to our design guidelines, our design standards when we go back into these facilities to upgrade them. And the fourth guiding principle is that we report back annually to the board to um, uh, identify clearly what we've done, where we've done it, where we are in the proce process. I will make note, because I think this is an important aspect to make note of, that um, we clearly identify science labs and tech shops because that's something, those are the most specialized spaces in a school. I don't want um, trustees to believe that that's where the work stops. That's just a commitment to allocate these funds to those projects specifically. As we go into each and every secondary school, we will address their needs on a one-on-one -on -one basis because as you can imagine, the needs of Orchard Park may be different than Glendale, may be different than Sherwood, but at the bare minimum we know that science labs and tech shops will be done. Um, and then we'll take a look at whether it's the theaters, the specific requirements at each individual school, and then from there we look at how we allocate renewal dollars or any other funding announcements we have uh, from the ministry. So the proposal in front of trustees this evening is just to approve the guiding principles. Next month, in conjunction, we hope, with the funding announcement from the ministry, um, that we would actually have the schedule of when that work would be done and the scope of that work uh, for each school. Thank you. So the motion is to approve the guiding principles as found on 4C-2, and there are four guiding principles that you will find there. Uh, questions and comments from trustees. Trustee Johnstone. Thank you. Through the chair. Just in regards to the specific needs, uh, addressing the specific needs of each school, I know that each of our communities offered a lot of important and uh, great feedback during the accommodation review. I just want to make sure that when we're considering the specific needs of each school that we're also referring back to uh, the minutes of the accommodation reviews and taking information uh, and feedback that came out during that process. Thank you, Trustee Johnstone. Are you looking for a response? Yes. Okay, response. Uh, <clears throat> Officer Del Bianco. Through you, Mr. Chair, we will be taking into consideration what we've heard through the accommodation review process. We will also be taking into consideration what our design manual will tell us, and we will be looking at um, students, staff, principal that are in the schools today to ensure that we can best accommodate their requirements. Thank you. Trustee Johnstone. Thank you. Trustee Simmons. Thank you. I'm not sure if it's the appropriate type time now to, uh, to ask this question or it might come later uh, in a later report, but I'm just uh, um, around uh, tech shops. Um, if we can get a description of what a, a modern tech shop would look like, because uh, I know uh, we've looked at uh, things that have gone on in other boards, um, good things and things and, and mistakes that might have gone on in other boards because of the changing nature of tech. Um, and uh, I'm just wondering if we're going to have make sure that it's uh, something that's fluid and going to be uh, serviced for a long time. Thank you. So just to look to the officer um, to that question, particularly when we see the background information on tech labs and other facilities. Three, Mr. Chair, that work is ongoing right now as we put together um, our education design manual for secondary schools. So as we plan out the different spaces, whether it's tech shops or science labs, in this case tech shops, um, those standards that we come up with would be applied not only to the new construction, but when we go back into the existing facilities. So new or existing, um, the standard will be the same across the entire jurisdiction of the board. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Simmons. Trustee Brennan. Um, two questions, if I may, Mr. Chair. The first one is that uh, on 4C-3, we're seeing an example of a proposed secondary revitalization schedule, not necessarily um, uh, absolutely specific. So I guess the question I'm really asking, we've identified science and technology labs, but let us say through the design process that all the trustees have been engaged in and continue to be engaged in, if we see fitness and wellness uh, centers, 
as something that's rising to the surface as some concern um, would and I know this is a sample, but uh, is that is that still in the possibility uh, of these next two or three years? That's what I, and my first question, then I have a second. Thank you, Officer Delbianco. Thank you, Mr. Chair, it is. Um, it's important to note that the reason why we believe it's important to come back in front of the board annually is because the funding is predicated on the sale of property. So as the sale of property goes up, we can, and as we find out what our um, tenders come in at, there may be more that we're able to spread out uh, at the existing facilities. So yes, to answer your question, and two, we'll be back in front of the board on an annual basis to ensure that we clearly identify the scope of work as we um, narrow it down. Okay, thank Trustee you for Brown. that. The other one is very specific to Dundas Valley Secondary School, and this may not be the appropriate time for it, uh, but I'm happy to let it fly out and see, see where it lands. Um, because you're identifying, let's say, the science and technology labs, and part of the renovation plan for Dundas Valley Secondary School is, in fact, technology and science labs. Um, not totally understanding the envelopes of funding, but let's assume there's different envelopes of funding. If the, if the envelope we're looking at here is going to deal with science labs, then in the renovation uh, project for Dundas Valley, could the money that's already booked into that budget for science lab be freed up to be used some other way? Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to ask. I will allow Dan to answer. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, we would look at the school on an individual basis. At the moment, um, the funds have been earmarked towards science labs and tech shops. I will note that when we say tech shops, some people actually think it's just the four, the four walls and the equipment therein. But when you're actually looking at redesigning a tech shop, if we use Dundas Valley as an example, you're also looking at the external windows to the tech shops. You're looking at the, this space as a whole, the ventilation system of the tech shop, the lighting of the tech shop. So while sometimes it may not seem like a lot when I stand up here and say tech shops or science labs, the actual scope of work, once it's clearly defined, will encompass more than just the four walls that we know make up any one of these given classrooms. Thank you. Thank you for now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, student Trustee Susick. Thank you, this is through the chair, of course. Um, through the next steps, I do understand that the schedule and funding for the HWDSB secondary school revitalize, rather revitalization strategy will be presented to the board for approval in May 2014. I'm just curious as to what is the process that is currently being followed to update schools, specifically high priority schools, and their <coughs> principals and parent councils as to when they will be receiving funding. <coughs> Thank you. Officer. So through you, Mr. Chair, under the strategy as it sits today, this is the allocation of approximately $30 million that we had footnoted for the construction of a new school on the South Mountain. Um, we are building our case. This, this revitalization strategy began with the secondary accommodation reviews. And as we've worked our way through between receiving funding from the ministry, um, for the north, receiving funding from the south. We're at that stage now where literally we have um, to fulfill the balance of this mandate and reinvest in those schools. The, the scope of work and the schedule presented to trustees next month will uh, clearly identify the schools, the years in which those schools, um, the work will be undertaken at those schools, and the scope of work at those specific schools, with an emphasis in this particular case solely on science labs and tech shops. Um, we that is only this funding envelope. There are other funding envelopes that we will continue to draw from, including our annual school renewal grant, including a number of other, I'll say, exciting ministry announcements with regards to um, schools that qualify as high FCI schools or schools with high renewal needs. Um, our long-term facilities master plan identifies or categorizes all of our schools, elementary and secondary, and classifies them based on their school condition index. Um, the three schools that we've identified and we've tried for funding a number of times now um, are uh, Sherwood, Ancaster, and Westmount in this particular case. And our goal is always to take those schools that are remaining in our inventory off that poor 
category and move them out. In, so our emphasis as the number one um, criteria says will be placed on those schools, yet there'll be a standard that'll be all remaining schools we brought up to as well. And just to follow up with that through the chair, of course, um, if this motion were to pass, would schools, again, uh, maybe, anyways, would schools be updated as to what is exactly being passed here? Would they be updated so that they know that in May they would know what's going on? Sorry, my wording wasn't too great there. Absolutely. Through you, Mr. Chair, I think it's a very exciting strategy, and I think it's something we need to get out to the schools because they need time to plan for this, um, and it really is the final puzzle piece to our secondary school accommodation reviews. So absolutely, the message would have to get out to all schools. And again, we revisit it on an annual basis here in front of the board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Glauser. I just want to make a, a wonderful comment. This is very, very exciting. In my previous four years from six till 10, I know it always was an upset when we could not do what we would like to do to the science labs and the tech labs at the school due to funding, whatever. So I think this is one of the best, the best things that uh, has come along in a long while. So, good work. Thank you, Trustee Glauser. <laughs> Trustee Turkstra. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just a question of clarification. What is the difference between schools, our elementary schools, who are lucky enough to have a science lab under the old definition of a science lab. How does that differ from what a new science lab will look like? Uh, because the old style is the benches with the sinks, with the Bunsen burners and the high, you know, where they're on, on high stools and they've got their lab coats on. And, and in a new school now, when you go and I'll say, well, let's, where is the science room? It's an open classroom, so it's a science learning room without those benches that we're used to that we probably had when we were in high school. So through you, Mr. Chair, what's the, what's, what does it look like now? Thank you. Dan? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, science labs today, anybody that's walked through our schools, absolutely constructed 40 or 50 years ago. The environment, the learning environment is completely different now and in a different way that we engage students. All of that will be reflected in our um, design manual. So we will have the template and the layout for what science labs, whether it's general science, whether it's physics, any other, any other of the science labs, um, you know, pushing the benches, per pushing the work areas out to the side and having, um, you know, collaborative spaces in the middle, making sure that everybody can see, sight lines are good, uh, all the different equipments, all the different lighting, natural lighting from outside. So the standards today that you see across the province are completely different than what we currently have, but we're looking to harness those standards um, and implement them in all of our schools. So the design manuals really, as we've always mentioned, the, the building blocks and the footprint that we will go back to all of our schools and use to lay out the new uh, science labs. So the biology lab would look different than the general science lab, or are they multi-purpose rooms? Yeah. Through you, Mr. Chair, they are different because some require chemical reactions, so there's uh, fume hoods, and where in one case, for example, um, we used to have individual fume hoods per classroom, uh, and now the trend is to a shared fume hood, so the layouts are different and the requirements for the different uh, science labs uh, differ slightly. So we would be reflective of what's happening design-wise now and education-wise. Yeah, other question I had is um, I appreciate the uh, descriptor of the scope of the work because we know that when we go in, we renovate, whether it's uh, science spaces or technology spaces, you've elaborated that, yes, you know, it's the windows and the, the entire space. So what happens if when we're in these spaces and we're renovating and some of the scope of the work encroaches past what, we, what the original scope was, and it now encroaches into the other parts of the school. What's the budget process for that? Will those monies come, come out of this? Because you've, I mean, the, the philosophy is that the walls are open and whatnot, so why not do the other work as well? But that isn't, it's the same pot of money, but this is a, is a more specific budget item. So how are we dealing with those types? Because our, the age of our buildings are, are old, the ones that we're renovating. So 
you're going to open things up and there's going to be more work required. Officer Delbianco. So through you, Mr. Chair, this uh, provides the foundation and it'll be subsidized by a number of different funding pots, including our annual renewal funding, as well as whatever other additional funding that we could leverage from the ministry. So as we go in and con con clearly define the work, we, we know what we've allocated based on the funding strategy in front of everybody, then we would offset that should the need arise through a number of different pots that we uh, can draw from. Also, I mean, overarching all of this is the simple fact that we've said from the beginning that right now with our current inventory of secondary schools, our dollars are stretched very thin. One of the reasons why we undertook secondary these secondary accommodation reviews was to right-size the system so that we had more funds to allocate to the remaining facilities, both renewal funds and, where possible, operational funding. So there's two additional pots right there, aside from whatever the ministry may provide later on, that we can draw from as a direct result of the overall secondary school revitalization strategy. Thank you. Trustee Orban. Very much. <clears throat> um, but we're talking, <clears throat> pardon me, about $30 million, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> we're talking $30 million that was designated to go to the South, New South um, High School. Now we have that money. We also have a long term capital plan where schools have been waiting for upgrades. <clears throat> and now we're saying you're going to be specific. We're all happy about it. But I'm, what I'm not understanding is we've got elementary schools, almost same as my colleague has mentioned, <clears throat> that require upgrading. And some of them have labs in them. I, I never looked upon them as general or specific but I've been in those labs. So what I'm trying to say is the three high schools, and you didn't mention other parts earlier, you were saying to us Sherwood, um, Ancaster, <coughs> and Westmount. Sherwood is $31 million, not including, I mean, including the uh, science lab, and Ancaster and Westmount is $21 million. What I'm not understanding is we have a long list of to-do things, and especially in our elementary schools, I do not think it's fair to allocate that $30 million, which you first said, to three secondary schools, and not look at our long-term plan, capital plan, that we go over every year, and some schools are not even addressed to their needs. Well, it's going to be lovely to have these um, lab and tech uh, classes. But you know, for me, I think we forgot what our role in as educators to all our schools. There will be students graduating that will not have had even a lab in their school in the elementary programs. And we have put a lot of money in schools like Franklin Road, for example, and Helen Dittweiler. So my question is, we didn't even save any of these dollars should there be a need to balance our budget. So you're so happy you make this decision right away. What bothers <coughs> me, what about our other roles to educate all our students and looking at our older schools? I'm sorry. $30 million, yes, the ministry has helped us out. But we're designating that right away, and we're not looking at the realities of certain elementary schools where certain students live in portables or uh, six-pack uh, portables or whatever we call them. So my question is, how much thought did we, as a staff, put into what we're doing because we have $30 million to spend. I'm sorry. I'm happy about the intent. I'm not happy what schools are denied renewal, in, in my opinion. So with a specific reference to 
three schools, $30 million, and then you say, as my colleague mentioned, the elementary, well, we have other pots to look into. So I thought we had the long term, and I'm repeating myself, a capital plan, and we're not even looking at that. So my question is, what are we really doing here? Other than making some people happy, while our elementary will not be happy. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Orban. I'm just going to look to the director. First, we could clarify, we'll answer the question, of course. We could clarify the reference to three schools. I'm just not understanding the, the, the different versions I'm hearing. Through you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> the dollars, 31 million, are not for three schools. The dollars are for all schools secondary. And the reason that they are for all schools secondary is because this board recalls that you passed the motion to self-fund through disposition, the New South School. The ministry, in terms of the business case we presented to them, understood that due to the program strategy and the secondary arc process, that there was a commitment that all secondary schools would be great schools. And that's why when making that business case, the ministry realized then by giving the $31 million to the South School, that then those dollars could be used in the other secondary schools. So it is true that this Recommended action is for secondary for the purpose of the program strategy. It is for all schools that need specifically science, <coughs> tech, and then other potential uh, needs that emerge. And the elementary process will come through that accommodation review and the decisions that may potentially be made here. Thank you. Trustee Orban. I don't know in what condition our, our labs and our tech rooms are in those second, other secondary schools. But what I'm, what I'm aiming at is that suddenly because we have the money, we have to spend it. I know we have other pockets that we could go to, but I'm all, what has not been presented is how we're going to balance the budget and where are we going, what are we going to do in areas that we have to cut. Now, also, in September, there may be a change in the environment of the younger classes where we need EAs. I always go through this every year that we haven't got enough EAs, we have to share them. All I am saying, are we being fair? And do, do these labs and text school, uh, areas have to be used by this money given to us? I'm sorry, I'm selfish. I believe the elementary schools, some of our older schools, some of these kids who leave us will never have been in a lab. Now, is that fair? Thank you, Trustee Orban. I don't think that's a question for staff. Um, that is, in fact, it's a recommendation coming to trustees that we use the money for this purpose. Trustees wish to use the money for another purpose, but we do have previous direction for the program strategy. But uh, it would have to come through a different process. So if, if you disagree with the item, I think trustees have heard your argumentation, but that would be, uh, that would be trustees' decisions. Okay, so I'm looking to... We have no further. Oh, you have Ray. Okay. Sorry, Trustee Orban. I just want the question that you pose to staff is: Is this fair? I assume the, the answer is yes to that, in Trustee's point of view, our staff's point of view. But I'll look to the director to provide further information. Through you, Mr. Chair. It is the expectation uh, in the work that staff has done on behalf of the board with the ministry that capital dollars be spent for capital projects. This board does oversee all aspects of budget, and if a different decision wished to be made around capital dollars, then that would be something that you would direct me to work with the ministry. Thank you. Anything further, Trustee Orban? Well, uh, coming from the chair. Um, you have one minute. My clarification is, was that the chair's role to answer for the board? Because I asked the question, and all I want to say that I feel for other students in our in our uh, in our with our responsibility, 
And just because we were happened to be given 30 million, I think we could have studied a little bit longer where else we need needs. Or looking at our budget because we're going to be short. Thank you, Trustee Orban. And just to answer your one question to me as, as chair of this committee, in order for me to direct the question, I have to try to understand the question. So if I have it incorrectly, I apologize. And in which case, I, I would appreciate the clarification if I can help you better. So thank you for that, that point. But there are further speakers. Um, next on the list is Trustee Mulholland. Thank you, Chair. Just, just a comment. I, the the money is going to be well spent. That, that's what it's put there for. But you know, we were given the total long range by the ma manager two months ago where there's uh, maybe $170 million which will be accumulated by this board over long-term closures. And it's, uh, so that's the part you're talking about. It's not, this, this money here was prescribed for a particular school, and, and the other $30 million that's going to be there is going to go for upgrading two particular things, science and tech. That's where we should start. That's where we've been told. But I just, just want you to know that like we've been told two months ago, there's $173 million in this pot for school closures. And if you close a school, you, you know, to, to accommodate uh, renovations to the other schools that are going to remain open, there will be funds available to the two to $170 million. Correct or not? Officer Del Bianco? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, that is correct, and you'll see that reflected in the recommendations for the elementary arcs already as we are proposing going back and addressing all of the outstanding renewal needs or upgrading gymnasiums or doing the work in uh, the elementary schools remaining in our facilities through the proceeds of disposition from the sale of the elementary school sites. Thank you. Further questions? In none, we are voting on item number three, secondary school revitalization strategy, and in particular, the guiding principles. All those in favor? That is Trustee Turkstra, Glauser, Hicks, Mulholland, Brennan, White, Bishop, Johnstone, student trustees Van Ignam and Susick, and Trustee Simmons. Those opposed? For the reasons I said. Trustee Orban, the motion is carried. We are moving to the final item remaining in the report. We are on 4-2, which is the 2014-15 budget announcement and the overview of the grants for student needs funding for 2014-15. So I'll go back to the Chair of Finance, Trustee Bishop. Mr. Chairman, this has two elements to it. The first one is an overview of the grants for student needs funding announcements, and there is a, 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 a page up, uh, giving details of this. Unfortunately, it's been printed on green by mistake, which there are many uh, um, uh, apologies. Um, this is the material that was presented to the committee and shows um, the, the education funding announcement of March 27, 2014, and the changes that were made. Um, that, that have been made in the overview of grants. Um, I'm, and there secondly is a, a motion attached to this. I don't know if trustees would like to ask further questions, first of all, about the education funding announcements. There were good things and bad things in the announcements. The good things were that it looks as though we will get more special education funding. There have been full day kindergarten is now part of the, um, the full funding of the grants for students' needs rather than being um, funded separately, which, will, which is good news for us. Um, there, there is a great deal about school board efficiencies and modernization and a working group that has been meeting on that, which is obviously going to have implications for us for the next four years. Um, there is also um, a enhancements to keep up with, with costs, which, which are very much welcome. I'm sure if, if there are questions, the superintendent would be pleased to go over this, and then we'll go on to the, the motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Trustee Bishop, and just to let trustees know the page that was handed around is background information on this item as requested by Chair of Finance. It is on green paper. It is, in fact, not in camera. It was just happened to be on green paper. So if there's any questions you have, and specifics, you'll find them on the green page in front of you. So any questions or comments, not on the motion, as Trustee Bishop mentioned, we'll discuss in a moment, but on the item of the funding announcement. Okay. 
Okay, Trustee Johnstone. More just a comment through the chair. I was really excited to see uh, adjustments made to the uh, grant money for special education. I know that since I've been elected to this board in 2011, uh, myself, uh, certainly Trustee Bishop and a number of other trustees around this board have been very vocal around the fact that we have one of the highest levels of special needs students in the province, but have always received one of the lowest levels of funding. And uh, part of what this uh, grant, uh, adjustments to this grant has done is a more fair and equitable process in regards to distributing funds across the province. So I'm hoping that, uh, I'm looking forward to our students receiving the benefit of that. Thank you. Further questions on the announcement? Trustee Turkster. Mr. Chair, I was hoping that uh, the Superintendent of Business could elaborate on the um, top-up funding for the benefit of the trustees and the public. Thank you. Superintendent of Business. Uh, thank you, and through the Chair. The changes in the top-up funding come about as part of the school board efficiencies and modernization process. So um, what is happening is they've created a two-tier system. And I'll tell you what's happening right now. Right now, um, school boards are topped up um, to 85% of their, um, in, bo sorry, I'll start over. If a school is operating below capacity, then the ministry will give us some top-up funding in order to help us pay the operational costs, which we will have anyways as a result of operating a school. So for example, if you have a school that has 100% capacity or a school that has 85% capacity, you're still going to have relatively the same operating costs associated with that school. So you're still going to have mostly the same utility costs, the same cleaning costs, that type of thing. Um, the, what has happened now is the ministry has made reductions so that any um, school below 65% capacity is only receiving 10% top up when in the past they would have been receiving 15% top up. So there's a reduction of 5% of the top up grant related to any school that is operating below 65% capacity. The other change that they made was that in the past and up until now it has been topped up to 100%. The maximum that we will receive right now is 95%. So if uh, and again, a 15% maximum. So if you're operating at 85% of capacity, we're only going to be topped up to 95, whereas in the past <coughs> we were topped up to 100. So there's, again, we're losing a little bit there. So we're still determining the actual dollar impact of the, the change to the top-up funding, but we're expecting that it's in the realm of a million dollars for the board. Thank you, Superintendent. Trustee Turkstra, any follow-up? Anything further, Trustee Dirksen? Thank you very much. Trustee Brennan. On the issue of the top up, uh, Mr. Chair, I just wondered, um, uh, given the fact that it uh, appears to be more of a two tier system, uh, what number of schools are affected by this, of our schools are affected <laughs> by this? Um, and. Um, yeah, I think that's the first question I would ask, and then then I might have a second one. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, sorry, based on our preliminary enrollment projections, and again, we're still um, finalizing sort of the calculation of the grants and ensuring that each school's enrollment is recorded properly, we're looking at approximately 17 schools that we have operating below 65% capacity. Thank you. Trustee Bishop, or oh. Bishop, what's your name? Trustee Brennan. I put the purple streak in my hair and hoping you don't mix me up with Judith. Um, anyway, uh, um, my second question is, of the 17 schools that would, would ne are now being affected, and I appreciate the proviso that numbers are being crunched, etc. How many of those, uh, it may be two different questions, so I'll ask the first one. How many of those 17 are already schools that we've been looking at through the, um, the ARC uh, reviews right now? And yes, I think, I think that might cover it. Um, how many of the schools um, already being looked at it in the process right now for ARCs uh, match up with that 17 schools? Senator? Of the 17 schools that are 
um, we're estimating are below 65% capacity. Only six of them, so 11 of the total, 11 are in the arc, six of those are not in the arc. The current, either in the current elementary arcs of the four or in our secondary arc that we have already um, um, approved the recommendations. Thank you, thank you. Further questions? Okay, back to Trustee Bishop as the chair of the committee on the motion. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think you've heard the background to the motion that, that was of concern to the committee. We, have, we, we now have a two-tier system for top-up grants, and we will not be topped up to the full amount as 100%. And there are 17 schools which will be um, further reduced in, their, in the amount of money that we'll be receiving because they are less than 65% capacity. We were told that this could mean a loss of between 500,000 to a million. Um, maybe the, um, the, the superintendent may be able to have, have further information on that. So, so the, on the, the motion of Trustee Todd, the Finance Committee... <coughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. It's written here as Trustee Todd. Oh, yes, but you should be Trustee White. That's right. I'm so sorry. Um, you know. The Finance Committee recommends that a letter be written to the Ministry of Education expressing our concerns, particularly with respect to school facility operations and renewal top-up changes announced in the latest funding announcement. We're doing our best, Mr. Chairman, to reduce the number of schools that are at low capacity, but we cannot do this, and, and, and it takes a while for our processes to take place. 17 schools is a lot of schools. 11 are in the process of being closed, which we know will take perhaps, in some cases, uh, um, several years, a couple of years, before we can actually close them properly. So. Um, we're wondering what more we can possibly do. So this is why we have this recommendation here, and I hope that there will be support for it. Thank you, Trustee Bishop. Questions or comments? Trustee Glauser. I just want to know the actual date under the second sentence, March 2047. Was it March 24th? Was it March 27th? Oh, yes, Thank you for that. Yes, March 247. I believe that is March. Yes, I believe it was. Actually, it might have been the 27th. I think it was on a Thursday. It was Thursday the 27th. So cross out the middle number four. Point a couple arrows around. Yes. Thank you. Okay, questions, comments to the motion? See nothing further. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Next item, we are moving to item number six, which is our human resources report from April 3rd. And we'll go to Trustee Simmons as chair of Human Resource Committee. Well, as you can see, uh, <clears throat> we didn't get much done uh, outside of in camera on this uh, particular meeting. We deferred. Uh, our uh, discussion of Bill 122 to our following meeting, and uh, which uh, happened to be um, earlier today. I don't have a, actually just before this meeting, so I don't have a report for that, but that would be coming um, I, at our next board meeting properly with a presentation. Okay, thank you. Would you like to move your report of yes, information? Thank yes. you. Moved by Trustee Simmons. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Johnstone. Questions, comments? All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. We do have item number seven, which is a report from the French Immersion Advisory Committee, uh, which is technically from the two co-chairs, uh, community representatives on the committee, uh, but they are not with us this evening, so we'll look to the Executive Council representative, Executive Superintendent Figurito. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. In front of you, um, Board of Trustees, have um, the report from the FIAC, who met on uh, March 26th. Um, in my absence, Superintendent Sue Dunlop was, was present. And um, both chairs 
Lisa Urban and um, sorry, Lisa Breton and Denise Massey have presented this report. There are no action items on this report, but there are five information items. One, review of French immersion programming was discussed. Um, number two, the Sherwood French immersion program around promotion of the program and communication of that program. Number three, discussion around out of catchment, full day kindergarten for, for potential future French immersion students. Number four, transportation policy was discussed and the mode of transportation provided for students in French immersion. And the fifth item discussed was uh, communication with parents regarding student assessments. Um, so those are the five items that were discussed and the French Immersion Advisory Committee will be meeting again on May 28th. To you, Mr. Chair, if there's any other questions. Thank you, Executive Superintendent. Uh, questions, Trustee Bishop. Mr. Chairman, I see that item number two says, take to the program committee to investigate promotion of Sherwood. Which program committee was, was, was this? Is that the trustees program committee? Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's my understanding of reading the minutes. Uh, that is to take it to the trustee program committee. So, Mr. Chairman, we need to, we need to upstate some action on this report. Then. Thank you, Trustee Bishop. Um, I, I did attend the meeting, so I'll just, as the trustee representative, um, the concern, just to elaborate, that the community articulated was that. Um, the Sherwood program, more families, especially those obviously within the catchment, are unaware of some of the technical aspects of the transition. Uh, there was talk at the committee to uh, recommend that the board form, formulate, and I'll look if I'm correct, the superintendent, that there would be perhaps a transition committee recommended for next year for those that would be moving to Sherwood. Um, so I think that is where they were hoping uh, to take that next year, but certainly I do not speak for the committee. But if Trustee Bishop, you'd like to move uh, action, certainly uh, we will take that into consideration. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And it looks as though item number three also deals with the program committee. There are recommendations to send to the program committee to investigate the promotion of Sherwood. They're concerned about a series of things there. And they also have recommendation that program committee review full day kindergarten out of catchment recommendations for French immersion. So, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think I would move that those items be sent on to the program committee. Thank you, Trustee Bishop. That's moved by Trustee Bishop. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Brennan. Thank you. So the motion is on the floor, in and the recommendation is for three items. I'm just clarifying with the mover. Uh, the recommendation to take the uh, promotion of Sherwood, French immersion, that's number one. Number two is the FDK out of catchment. Number three, um, the accepting of or tracking of out of catchment requests. Is that correct, Trustee Bishop? That's so correct. there's three items in the motion. We have a mover and a seconder. Um, perhaps I should step out of the chair, seeing as I believe Executive Superintendent wasn't there, was, was ill for that meeting. So I think it was Superintendent Dunlop that attended. So as the only trustee or person around the table, perhaps I should step out of the chair. So I'll, I'll give this, well, first, we'll, Okay, well, I guess I'll make my comments from here objectively. Um, I will not put myself first on the speaker's list, so over to Trustee Bishop. Mr. Chairman, I think it uh, seemed to me that it's important that we do take a notice of our French Immersion Advisory Committee. They have concerns here about the promotion, it seems to me, of the French Immersion Program at Sherwood. We will want to make sure that to know what's happening there uh, as well. And they're also looking at um, FTK and the implications for French immersion families and, and asking for some tracking and the first uh, uh, way to make sure that uh, things are well is to have some data. So uh, I think it's important that these two items be sent on to the program committee for discussion. Thank you. Um, as the seconder, Trustee Bishop. <laughs> Trustee Bishop. See, my mic was off for all of that. Perfect. Um, Trustee Turkstra. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
So uh, I had a couple of questions about um, you know, some of the issues that come forward from French, the French Immersion Advisory Committee. And I'm happy to be supporting the motion for it to go to the program, for sure. But so three things I want to address. One is the out of catchment for French Immersion. Um, so was, was the idea there to uh, maybe somehow survey parents who had their children at JK and SK at their home school and whether they actually took the leap to go to the French Immersion School and or did they stay at their home school and follow the Eng English stream? So was that part of the discussion or was it to, in order to uh, as a seamless type of French immersion program, obviously it's more, it's more optimal to have them at the French immersion school in kindergarten, in kindergarten so that they're there for their entire elementary education. So are there two aspects to it? Yes, I can answer those, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but we have Superintendent Dunlop joining us, who was also at the meeting, so it makes my life a little bit easier. <laughs> we'll go to trust uh, Superintendent Dunlop. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And through you, my recollection of the discussion at the at FIAC around this issue was that parents were more concerned with your second, the second statement, um, that pa that students were not accepted out of catchment for JK and SK um, if they were wanting if they were, if they were wanting to go to French immersion at that school. So then they would be going to school in their in catchment school for JK and SK, and then switching to grade one to their French immersion school. So there was, they were concerned that there was a loss of enrollment at the grade one level because they were staying, or they wanted less transitions. Superintendent Dunlop? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, it was fewer transitions for their children. I have also, I'm just adding to the plate here, that there might be some loss of enrollment, not for our the Hamilton Marmot District School Board, but for French immersion because the kids get to know their peers at their home school, and then the parents are happy with the home school, and they figure, oh, I'm just going to keep them here. So do we track that at all? Superintendent, uh, Mr. Director. Yeah, three, Mr. Chair. I think that if uh, the program committee wants any of this work to be tracked, it certainly could be asked for, brought back to standing at this point. We don't do a lot of this, but are certainly open to any direction that the board may wish to, to provide. Okay. I guess my comment is when the program committee is looking at it, there, for me, there were two aspects to this. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is, um, did the French Immersion Committee look at having <coughs> a heavier concentration of, of English in the uh, their first language um, in earlier grades for literacy in English because they get it later on and I'm getting the impression from uh, the people I know in the system that their English literacy skills suffer because it's learned later. Is that a concern? It, it, I believe it's an ongoing discussion at FIAC, so I'll look to uh, super, uh, Executive Superintendent Figueroa. So, through you, Mr. Chair, not at the previous meeting, but in previous ones I've been in, there has been discussion about our uh, early immersion program and the benefits of the higher percentage of, of it being in French instruction. So we have some members of FIAC who are very supportive of that, and then there's also been some members of FIAC wondering about um, whether the con higher concentration in, in the French language has an impact. So there's a, a debate on that, and, and as a system, we continue to try to commit to support students who may be struggling as well. But um, the, the great thing about our program is that we do have an early immersion program with a high percentage, especially in grade one, almost 100% focus in French, because we know around the importance of the French proficiency and, and that we have a higher percentage. So that has been a debate that has been going on between both. Um, but I would say, the majority of the parents at FIAC are, are supportive of our program in the early grades being a higher per, uh, time spent in French instruction. Thank you. Trustee Turkstra? All right. Uh, obviously, there's good debate going on about that. So. 
Uh, the other thing is, uh, I want to know about the resources, how French immersion resources are supplied when we go through grade progressions. Uh, I understood, or I assumed, that the ministry did that, and I don't think that's happening. So, uh, are, are we getting adequate resources as we progress at French immersion schools? Grade six, now we've got a grade seven class. We need textbooks, we need resources in French for those. How are they funded? Executive Superintendent. Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Speaking uh, as a previous superintendent of, of Michael Jean, um, the, the board does provide funding for the expansion of, of the program. So, with our consultant, Christine Reese, supports schools in the purchasing of key resources that the ministry also recommends. Um, that process, I believe, Superintendent Dunlop can speak a little bit more to. At the last meeting, that process was reviewed again by the FSL consultant, and she's reached out to a few schools uh, regarding that. But we have, in HWDCB, has supported the growth of those programs and resources purchased essentially to support schools. Mr. Director? And to you, Mr. Chair, in light of our movement towards a digital uh, resource, I'm a part of a group that's actually working with. Uh, vendors to ensure that there is enough French content in the digital resources because obviously French immersion is a very significant population in the province of Ontario, so there's also a digital component. Thank you, Trustee Turk, sir. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Johnstone. Thank you. Um, a comment and then a question, um, or I guess. Um, so one is that I was very excited to see under um, part two for Sherwood FI program uh, the mo motivation to reinforce a positive uh, image of Sherwood is uh, a trustee representing Ancaster. I have received a couple of phone calls this past year from parents inquiring about what the transition is going to, to look like. And um, so I'm also wondering that in regards to reinforcing that positive image that we're also promoting um, the busing privileges that this community will be receiving, as well as promoting the other specialized programs that are available at Sherwood, because I think that those are all important um, sell features for, for our parents and for our students um, that they would like to take advantage of. Um, I do have a question. So there's additional funding or top-up funding for FI students. I'm curious, what is that amount, and does it get um, distributed to the schools for the schools to use for purchasing, say, um, French immersion materials, or is that money end up going to pay for, um, say, teachers and, uh, and, the, and that, I guess, administrative costs? I'm just curious how that, what that funding amount is and how it gets spent. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, unfortunately we do not have the details for many of those questions. I'm wondering if I may, could this come to the program committee and then back to standing through that? And we'd be very willing to provide all the appropriate information. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Trustee, Trustee Simmons. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I do remember uh, when uh, the board had to pull uh, French immersion out of kindergarten. Um, as uh, the all-day kindergarten rolled in uh, for the very reason that would have crippled the board uh, with its resources to accommodate that. But I think sort of the sentiment at the time was eventually as we, we sort of got control of our resources in our board and, and we started um, 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 getting a handle on our uh, excess capacity that this would be something that could revisit uh, and we could possibly in the future put um, kindergarten back, uh, or sorry, French immersion back into kindergarten. And, and that's really just um, an FYI for the program strategy. Um, I'm not sure what it would take for us to be able to go back to that, but maybe the program, um, the program committee could look at that. Thank you, Trustee Simmons. Further comments or questions? We are speaking to Trustee Bishop's motion, seconded by Trustee Brennan. I'll just try to be as objective as possible and just put in my two cents from attending the meeting. Uh, on the three items, the, the committee absolutely recommends, or intends rather, to bring forward these recommendations. Um, in terms of Sherwood, um, they want 
the board to, to look at a transition plan and promotion plan, but they hesitated to bring that forward to us because they've already had the item with the program committee recommending or suggesting a review of the date. So they weren't really looking to look for extra promotion before we actually land or reconsider the date. Um, but if that goes to program, there's certainly no harm in that. Um, on the second item, which is FDK out of catchment for, and that's courtesy for kindergarten as well, I think Trustee Simmons said it best in that the reason, one of the primary reasons for taking uh, French immersion out of kindergarten was uh, FDK. And we know next year is our last roll, rollout of FDK. So the committee felt it was a bit premature to ask us in this school year while we still have one final rollout. But once again, they do want us to look into it, they just thought it was a bit early. So if we're ahead of the game, I'm sure they're going to be more than happy. And, and lastly, um, the third one is something that I know the superint executive superintendent was looking into, um, and this was the ongoing tracking of, of a catchment requests, if possible, for JK or SK students intending to take French immersion. And there was discussion around trustees, Trustee Turkster's motion from a couple of years ago regarding an exception for being more family friendly if we can get students into JK, SK. Um, and some families have required, but have had to take it to the higher levels in order for it to be considered. The committee felt that there there should be a stronger tracking system so if spots do become available rather than those that are louder gets their wish it's more of an equitable equitable process so it, they certainly intended to bring that forward and I know the executive superintendent was looking into that so those are the three updates just from attending the committee um, to those three items so I certainly support it um, but just to update you that the committee was not recommending this particular timing necessarily but if we're ahead of the game then then even better. So I will support the motion. So jumping back into chair as never leaving. Uh, any further comments to the motion? Thank you. So the motion is to refer these three items to the program committee. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving to item number eight, the Special Education Advisory Committee report from March 26th. And we are looking to Trustee Bishop to move the report. Very good. Um, Trustee Bishop has moved the report, seconded by Trustee Brennan. Do we have any comments or questions on the report found in 7-1? Seeing none, all those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Item number nine on our agenda, written notice of motion, titled Bill C-23. Fair Elections Act, and this is a notice of motion being brought to us by Trustee Bishop. Trustee Bishop, if you could first read the motion um, and move. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, whereas as municipal politicians we strive to increase the electorate's participation in local decision making, whereas as municipal politicians we strive to increase participation in the democratic process at all levels of government, whereas as a board of education we strive to teach students in both elementary and secondary schools about civic awareness, knowledge of the election process and the importance of exercising democratic rights, Whereas we share concerns as highlighted by OPSPA on Bill C-23, therefore be it resolved that trustees endorse OPSPA's submission to Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs regarding Bill C-23, Fair Elections Act. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Moved by Trustee Bishop. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Johnstone. Trustee Bishop, you have the floor. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you will see attached to this unnoticed uh, motion is the actual letter that was sent by OPSPA on, uh, on our behalf. And uh, I hope that uh, most of you will agree that it's a really excellent letter laying down all the, the points that are on a, a note of interest, particularly to us. So I think one of the things that, that we uh, uh, know has been very, very successful is the work done by Student Vote. And part of this act would remove the um, role of um, the limit, the role of Elections Canada, to, to in public education and information programs. And I, we, our job as a board of education is to to create new citizens, to to uh, educate people about their civic rights, to to um, demonstrate how democracy runs within our schools, and to teach about the importance of being involved in our communities. So uh, I think that it's really important that we endorse this letter sent by OPSPA 
and um, we send it, Mr. Chairman, I hope that if we do agree to do that, that we will send copies to our local members of Parliament. Thank you. Trustee Johnstone. Um, I certainly support uh, this motion. I think that as trustees, we have two responsibilities. One is uh, democratically elected officials. We do want to encourage individuals to uh, take part uh, in the democratic process and we want to encourage uh, uh, communication with uh, certainly our constituents, but also as educators. Uh, we certainly want to uh, encourage and uh, teach our students to become active and engaged citizens uh, and to help build a stronger Canada. Uh, so I think that uh, I think that this is a wonderful motion, and I hope to, that we'll have unanimous support tonight. Thank, Thank you, Trustee Johnstone. Further debate, Trustee Orban. I agree with both my colleagues, but I would like to ask a question. In municipal politics, we do not side with various um, with various. Uh, we, we do not side with various participants or uh, parties. Uh, will that still be the case with this motion? Uh, because you know we don't do that. That is not part of municipal politics. We support children and community. So having said that, what I'm hoping for is what will happen when I was at school and we had political debates. We debated issues that will make this country stronger, like the democratic process. We debated issues like funding. Where does the money come from? So that's what I like to have clarification on. Thank you. Otherwise, I do support the move for democratically uh, principled discussion with students. Okay, so I'm moving to the mover of the motion. Trustee Bishop, did you capture the question? If not, we can ask I, I think so, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. This, this, the, the, this proposal comes from the Ontario Public School Board's um, letter. It's, 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 asking, it's asking us to support the letter sent by the board of the Ontario Public School Board's Association, which we are a member of. It's not, it's not to do... The letter is actually enclosed in your package. It is 8-2. And, and it has nothing to do with any, any partisan politics. Thank you, Trustee Bishop. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you very much. Further debate? Trustee Brennan. Not a debate at all. I'm totally supportive of this uh, maneuver um, in uh, support uh, of the issues. Uh, just as we do provincially when we send letters to the Minister of uh, Education or other ministers, we are not being partisan by asking them to consider certain things, even though they, as a government, uh, are of a certain political stripe. Um, as government, they're seen as government for all people, uh, the same federally. So I, I strongly support this. I'm just wondering, though, in the original um, letter from OPSPA, they did a list of copying which I, you know, copies too, and I appreciate those. Um, and, and maybe in addition to the local MPs, as uh, the mover has mentioned, there may be some in there that we may want to also send. I'm not, uh, certainly we would want the OPSPA themselves to see. But um, in the original listing, it was the City of Toronto Council members. I'm just wondering if we should ourselves include the City of Hamilton uh, councillors. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's absolutely necessary, but I'm just trying to echo the list that came from OPSPA. Thank you. I'm seeing nods, and I think in the end it's your discretion as chair, so you have a lot of support in nods, from what I can tell. Um, further questions or comments? <laughs> Trustee Simmons. Thank you, and I would uh, support this as well. Certainly. In this day and age, we should be making it easier for people to vote. Um, we haven't gone nearly far enough. I think I, re I recall seeing somewhere 
<clears throat> there's going to be an election where everybody can vote online. Um, I don't know if that's in Manitoba, but I remember hearing something about that. And this is the direction we should be coming in, not making, especially this, you know, if, if you look at who's, who is this going to likely affect, likely affect uh, uh, more disaffected people, uh, poorer people, uh, and people that uh, are of high mobility. And, um, and so I think it's important that as a board, as, as politicians, municipal politicians, we take a stand on this as well. Thank you, Trustee Simmons. Further comments, questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Now we are moving to item number 10, which is our private session. Uh, quick clarification from Trustee Glauser. Just while we're still in open, um, unless I missed it, I'm not sure whether we mentioned at the start the regrets. Trustee Pedal. Yes, Trustee Petal is not joining us, but we're not clear on whether we received regrets. We weren't sure if she was here or not. Well, the minutes probably should, whether it's a regret yeah. or not, the minutes yeah. should so indicate. They'll, they'll reflect that okay. she Okay, I just, just wanted to make sure we hadn't yeah. missed it. Okay. No, thank, thank you, you for that. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, so now we're moving to private session. Uh, so we need a motion to move in private. Trustee Brennan, seconded by Trustee Glauser. Those in favor? That is Trustees Turkstra, Glauser, Hicks, Orban, Brennan, White, Bishop, Johnstone, Student Trustees Van Agnum, Susick, and Trustee Simmons. Those opposed? Trustee Mulholland. So we just kindly at this time ask our...